Hey, everybody. It's Scaly Nelson here. I've been off for a few weeks. So I'm super excited to get back at it. I uh, appreciate uh, Pep and the guys filling in uh, when, I was, when I was on vacation. But uh, I've been kind of itching to get back at it and talk about NFTs. So here we go. I got some intros uh, for everybody. Watch out, ladies. I heard he's single. His art blocks have woken up like Rip Van Winkle. If you're denominating an ETH, he's back in green, even hodling his Eden hordes, which in this market seems obscene. It's Zinc. Hey, it's gone. Hey, pretty good. If you want to meet up in real life, don't pick a fancy place to eat because he'll be smoking doobies and he won't be discreet. He docks Kobe's secret alpha alt account. Thanks a lot. Ruined it for the rest of us. So much for getting a yacht. It's Pep, our producer. How you guys doing? Great. And a very special uh, guest here, member of the Wagme crew. We've known him for over a year. He loves making his collage. Joining us from Brazil, we'll actually hear his voice and know it's not a mirage. His specialty is collecting photos. Can't wait to eat some feijoada one day and discuss Nakamoto's. Yuri, welcome Yuri from Brazil. Hi guys, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you. Thanks for joining in. Um, so yeah, since I've been off, uh, you know, a lot. I feel like a lot has happened, but the honestly, the trends have been kind of similar. Like that, the biggest trend I'm seeing is, um, as I guess as we were talking a little bit off air, but as ETH has kind of leveled off at this one thousand ish level. Whenever this happens in the past, whenever ETH hits a number that then stays there for a while, it, I feel like people kind of mentally, whether it's four hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, four thousand bucks, whatever that number is, once it kind of stays there for a little while, you kind of do a reset, and then you look at the stuff all over again, and you say, "Okay, this is undervalued. You know, I'm, I'm going to start buying this." And I feel like we've seen that, especially with you know so-called blue chips like Punks and more, definitely a. a you know, a, a movement away, some of the lower quality PFP stuff and, and back into art, especially art blocks, which kind of gotten beaten down for the last six to nine months. And now they're starting to have a resurgence for sure. And, uh, you know, for example, like squiggles were at like five ETH, which was like $10,000. And then when that became $5,000, they were still at like five ETH, six ETH. Fidenza is same thing. They were at like a hundred ETH, which was like 200,000 bucks. And they kind of went down uh, to a hundred thousand bucks. And then, you know, or maybe they're actually less. And then, you know, all of a sudden in the last week or two, I think what we've seen is people are realizing, wait a minute, in us dollars, these are, these are cheap and I'm gonna start buying them again. And so you've seen several of these art block projects almost double in like a week or two, uh, as far as USD, well, ETH terms almost double, uh, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. Like it almost feels a little bit out of nowhere, but then you some uh, you also look at like the the number listed. You're not really seeing like huge amounts of people. Um, like no one's in a huge rush to 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 list this stuff either, right? So a lot of these collections have only like you know a few dozen lists. A lot of people are just holding on to it. So as you get this little more increased demand, people are like, and I think I've been seeing this on like Twitter and like there's definitely a lot of stuff with like the Moonbirds community and and just seeing some like kind of classic people who were just PFP people before talking much, much more about uh, trying to get in on generative art. And like some of the stuff, I guess, is pretty cheap if you were used to buying like 100 ETH apes and stuff like that. So I think having, I mean, you're a huge art block collector, Zinc. I, we, we all have some, but um, I think I think it's pretty typical for a lot of people in the space to not have any art blocks, right? Like they mm -hmm. came in with Top shot, and then they, or maybe later, and then they got in with board apes, or they got in with uh, maybe just after board apes and tried to get the next thing, and, and mainly just did PFPs, a lot of which, you know, aren't doing very well. And then, so it's kind of funny how, like, I, I was in a Twitter spaces the other day, just kind of listening, and like everyone, every single person in there talking was talking about how the market was so wrecked and dead and how nothing was selling. And I'm like, hmm, like, I don't know, like there's pockets that are definitely doing well again, uh, especially art blocks, for example, you know, and, and I kind of got, I don't think a single person in this whole spaces of like 50, hundred people didn't seem like any of them had any art blocks exposure or even maybe even knew what it was, which is, I found kind of fascinating. Yeah. And it seems really well suited to, um, a PFP collector. 
like that was always it's always kind of like this kind of gateway art in some sense where it has that collector at, at aspect to it it's not as deep as the you know, ten thousand collections and, and and these sorts of things and obviously don't have as many people um but you still have that same sort of community like if you go into block talk it's just constant people talking right and then you also have like you know that idea of rarity and like there's all the little gamified aspects of it too and so then i think you know it just seems natural if someone's used to that world very hard to jump into like looking at super rare if you're if you're just coming from pfps like you'd have i think you'd have no idea what to uh what to be looking for and it would just be a lot of uh you'd have to do a lot of education then and of course it's very expensive just to get in whereas i think with art blocks you have that kind of collector aspect to it which well, you can understand that these things are rare. These things not rare. You know, sense of a few collections that you like, and then, and then, um, and then you can play the trades game if you want. You don't. You're not going to get punished for um, buying rare or buying a particular trade or something like that. Yuri, I'm curious to, to hear from Yuri. I'm curious to hear from you about um, art blocks. I know you have some. I don't really know how many you have, but if you felt, you know, like selling them when things got rough, or you kind of just going to hold those for a long time actually art blocks was the first dynamic slices was the first nft that i bought in january last year so 0.08 oh, cool. eve or something yeah 0 0.08 and then i was checking the other day and in 16th of january i bought a second nft from there it's it was the nimbots from brian brinkman and actually I, I was new, right? I didn't know how, what, what to do. And I, I messed the, the whole gas thing, but I was talking in, in Discord and I, and I just saw yesterday that it was actually these. So I bought it from him and he let me choose like oh, this and I sent him the money and he sent me the NFT all over the counter it was really, really crazy because, um, so that's really nice having this community in the beginnings. So yeah, that's now really I have cool. around yeah, yeah, and now and I have like 10, 12, and I'm not planning. I sold some, of course, but I I want to keep them for our next pump, like bigger, bigger pump. And the first one, I I'm not sure if I I want to sell like that dynamic slice. I think everything is is up now, right? Three, four, or Eve. Yeah, I think dynamic slice is like almost five ETH now. So I heard, I forget who it was. It might've been, I can't remember. It was a podcast the other day I heard and, and someone was describing the minting process of art blocks. And it's funny because you know we've all been around since it came out and I've actually only, I think I've only minted like three things because minting is such a pain in the ass when it was popular, right? And like you were just describing Yuri, like even like I'd been in the space for a while, but even I was like intimidated by the process and I didn't really quite understand the gas war part of it. And so... Um, I lost out on a couple, lost a little bit of ETH. And I was like, you know, this is annoying. I'll just buy on secondary. I bought my fit-ins on secondary, bought a couple other things on secondary for, for still pretty cheap. And I felt like even though you pay a little more than if you mint, it's like, that was kind of better because you get to pick. But I kind of have done a, a 180 on that because, and I, and I think you've talked about this, Zinc, but you know, if you mint a piece, it's very different than if you get a, if you mint a PFP project piece, what you're doing is, you're randomly getting one that's been created by a generator off chain, right? And then you just get it. It's like, okay, whatever. But when you're minting on, I mean, that's kind of the whole point of art blocks, but I think it, I don't think a lot of people really realize it. When you mint it, it's actually being created at that moment with an algorithm. Yeah. So, so the artist doesn't know what it's going to look. Nobody knows what it's going to look like, right? They have an idea of what it could look like within parameters, but then you get all these outputs and they're also different and they're also cool. And the fact that you get to join in in the process this guy I listened to the other day was saying, I think this might be taking it a little far, but he said he considers himself a co-artist. And I wouldn't really say that, but you are part of the process, right? And so yeah. without you doing the transaction, that piece would never exist. And that's really cool. And especially if you minted something a year ago or whenever Artblock started almost a year and a half ago, whenever that was uh, almost two years, the, um, the thought of like you're saying, you didn't want to sell yours. It's the first one you bought. And you, you didn't mint that one. You got it from D's because the minting thing was hard. And so a lot of people didn't mint for a long time, but imagine you minted something 
and then you've held it for three or four or five years and then someone makes you a solid offer on it but you're like i don't know i mean i kind of kind of sort of created this in a way and uh, there's this like special connection you get with it that you don't get with other nfts yeah i yeah. agree like i have a squiggle i had a squiggle from before that i bought because like obviously squiggles meant to that way before um i found out about art blocks but i was able to mint they had that special thing in may where you were able to mint like he opened up 300 squiggles right to mint and you had to, you had to apply and all this thing and put in an offer and stuff like that and even though you paid quite a bit it does feel kind of cool to like have an actual minted squiggle like it's really hard for me to think that i would sell it yeah that was fun i uh von mises who we're gonna have on the pod hopefully next time um <laughs> pointed out that you know for for months the mentor was open on squiggles and um you could go on there and i i did several times and then <laughs> never did because the gas was kind of high i'm like i'm not going to mint one he minted 350 for ten thousand dollars yeah 0. Crazy. 0.035 crazy so crazy each when each was like 500 bucks yeah but uh 30 bucks <laughs> So, so it's funny how for a while there, it was like how in, in Snowfro has said many times, like when he created it, he came up with 10,000 because he, he got an, well, punks partially, you know, that's probably where he came up with the number, but he wanted to do a number that was ridiculously high. Cause he, he didn't think they would, he honestly didn't think they would sell out for years. And he wanted people who heard about art blocks to be able to go on the site and then mint a squiggle. And that would be like the first thing you do when you learn about art blocks. And then you start looking at these other collections and then there was this period, I don't remember exactly when it was, but like all of a sudden the last maybe 2000 or 2,500 squiggles just all got minted in like an hour or two. And then, you know, he locked that it, right? That. Yeah. He locked it like 9,100. Yeah. Yeah. He let, he saved place. them for yeah giving away later, which he yeah. didn't clear about for a long time. So yeah, he will still mint them here and there. Which I always think is kind of funny because it's like he mints them as gifts a lot of the time. It's like he sold a few now recently, but like, for a while, he was just giving about his gifts, right? And there's like, yeah, you know, yeah it's he, like a he gave, twenty thousand dollar gift. <laughs> I know he gave me one. Um, well, you know, like when I guess it was after they were closed, but they still weren't worth that much, maybe or yeah. no, no, no. They, I don't know. I remember when he gave it to me, it was like a nice gesture, but it wasn't worth that much money. But I was like, oh, cool, thanks. And then you know, then later it became worth something. Yeah, in the spring, right? It was. It it, it what this isn't even the one that caught on. Like I know, like I, even after ringers caught on. You could still get squiggles for like 0 0.25, 0 0.2, no problem. Yeah, there's and they pump for a little bit, but they came way back down. It didn't it wasn't it was not until that summer mm -hmm. that that it really just blew up. Like yeah, they were pretty late compared to a lot of other projects, actually. Yeah, I want to kind of do a whole episode where we we break down squiggles and geek out on them because there's so much. Um, I hope our listeners don't mind that, but I, I really think it's you look at them at first and you kind of say, okay, whatever. Like they're kind of cool. I kind of get it. But then there's, there's really way more to them than, than you first realize. And, and the way that, the way that it all kind of played out with the different varieties and the, the different, uh, the, they're all so like different and, and the way they like have color spectrums. And then of course the types and all that. And then the fact that they're animated, uh, it, it's really pretty cool. And you can change the background. People don't yeah, know so you can have a black background. Yeah, for those who don't know, it's best on the ArtBlock site, but you can do it on OpenSea as well. You just you um, click on it with your um, mouse, and then that animates it. And then you click your space bar, and then that changes the background. Yeah, and so then you can like get a dark black ground, and then you can screenshot it at just a perfect you know part of the animation that you like the most. And so it's and, and it's different. Each one is is unique, and so you can't even though you can screenshot it you know, a hundred different times at a hundred different points in the animation, those are still all unique compared to what the other ones can create, which is, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. There's like spacing between the colors and the range and speed. And I, I wonder if for collecting for, for collector's sake, like I found a few that are just off um, full spectrum or just off like the closest you can get to hyper rainbow without being a hyper rainbow is I think it repeats maybe like 12, 13, 14 times in the squiggle, meaning it goes through the rainbow like 14 times and it wears a hyper rainbow does it way more, but, but you can get one that's, that's pretty close and then they're way cheaper. 
but I don't know, but they're still priced into some point. So like aesthetically they're way cooler to, to me, but I don't know if later on, like enough people will really ever get that nuance to pay more for it. You know, I'm curious if that yeah, works or not. Yeah, that one's so cool. Uh, Pep just brought up the hyper rainbows. There was one on sale for 140. I don't think it got bought. I think it just got delisted. But um, honestly, if I had, I had asked you guys if you guys wanted to chip in because I would have considered buying that one. But not, I didn't have 140 ETH. But like, I would pay it maybe a third, a third or a fourth of it. Yeah, it didn't sell. Yeah, I think the last people buying these things wasn't curated. It was like a curated uh, fund. Oh yeah, they're buying. They're buying I, some pretty. I think you're expensive right. Swiggles. Yeah. And then the, another another project that's you know a lot of things have done this. A lot of the good kind of older projects that are established, Funks, you know, had a briefly had a fifty thousand dollar floor. Um, I think ETH terms, it was right around fifty ETH, and um, I remember at that time thinking, "Geez, that's a good time to buy a punk." And then I like blinked, and they went up to seventy five ETH or or at least seventy five thousand dollars about. And so I don't know what the floor is at now. It's probably right around there, but yeah, I think I looked at it today. It's like seventy five. Yeah, like that's the thing. Like the all these day. premium projects have done exactly that. All the art block stuff, all the punks, apes, um, even doodles has come up pretty good, but very few PFPs. But it's like all this older stuff. Even I thought I even saw Mooncats were starting to do better. There was some tweet about it going up to 0.5 floor, but I mean, I don't know. It probably didn't last. <laughs> you can check on it. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, let's see. punks and mebits pumped today. Something yeah, mebits pumped a, a lot, which seemed suspicious as far as like what what do people know? I don't know. I don't know what that's about. Well, there's the there's the Yuga Labs thing on the 16th, so maybe it's Yuga Yuga related with the other deeds a plant. Oh, the a plant stuff. Yeah, look at that spike in volume. So. I think it's funny how I almost, you know, part of being in the NFTs is you don't really want to just think about it as coins, right? Like they're more than that and you have more emotional attachment to it. And I try to, I feel like I'm happier when I just view things in ETH and I don't worry about the US dollar value. And so, you know, the whole, the whole goal is to get a nice collection and, and also flip some to stack ETH, right? And who, who cares what ETH is worth? Cause we know later it'll be worth a lot, but then the flip side of that is I think we're all, I think a lot of people do it that way. But then if you're just a cold hearted, like just, you know, pure trader and all you care about is making us dollars and not ETH, you can come into the market at certain times and just really play it well, which I don't, I don't do it that way. Cause again, it's just not really why I'm in it, you know, and it's, but I think, you know, I think a lot of us maybe should, maybe, maybe we should do it more, you know, cause we kind of leave money on the table. Yeah, it's just so hard to catch those swings. And like, it's just, I think it's like, it's just so easy to get left behind. I think people forget like how quickly things can, can change. Like, obviously people can do this while make a lot of money. If they're good at, uh, good at this kind of, um, like flipping and knowing when to get in and having a good sense. But I don't know. I just remember last summer, like if you had sold in June or July, you know, for a 20 or 30% profit or something, or even like a doubling, you know, you would have missed out on your hundred X easily for a lot of different stuff. So it's tricky. I know, I know you're saying though, like it's, it's, it's more fun though. I think to just to buy and hold and just wait for four years. I don't know. It's never like how many people sold autoglyphs in like October, November, December of 2020. They need Alex sold all his. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, or all the punk sellers when they were five thousand bucks. I mean, I, I'm guilty of that. I sold so many punks when they were, you know, five to ten to twenty thousand bucks. That's when I sold most of mine because that just seemed so crazy that I could make that much money on them. Yeah, now you wouldn't even blink. <laughs> That's so funny. So, what have you guys bought in the last couple of weeks? I'm curious. Um, I don't know if I've done much buying at all actually lately. 
I've done very I think little. I've just been like holding on. I've just been not, not selling. I think that's kind of how I survived this little bear. Yuri, what about you? Have you bought anything? I went to FX Hash. You guys are not in the Tezos land, but there's something happening there. <laughs> yeah, tell us about that. Tell us about FX Hash. Well, it's the it's the open version, non curated version of of art blocks, right? So on Tezos, ah, uh, yes, today was you can go back there. Today was the Is Iskra and Zach Lieberman mint i think it was today yeah sold out really pretty fast i didn't get one no one got one it's really nice i got volatile yeah those are nice really tell nice. us tell us about fx hash how, how it works like what is it just act like we don't know anything about it because i've played yeah, around with it i've it, minted on it once but i still don't know much about it yeah i i started i downloaded actually a github file to start playing with this maybe i i will just to learn right but it's seifert seifert this guy from elementary uh, rgb elementary that built this website and it's not on chain so different from from art blocks it's you have to you upload and the images the the files go to ipfs so it's different than than the art blocks but it's not curated you can just go and mint your project open you have the reserve list they have some interesting extra me mechanisms so so what I, what i'm doing now is for example i find some artists that i like on on twitter and see what like turn notifications on when they start saying that will, they will mint on fx hash I, I you go and ask for uh, allow list because this one has a loud list and and art blocks doesn't so or you just go here to the to the explore page and just find look what what they're doing what they're minting right so it's pretty open so yeah the only thing is it's not curated right it's not curated i think if you're yeah you can get a verification number so you it doesn't skip the one hour um minting time but once yeah you you you, you can do whatever you already has some you can do what just mint your project and you can do like three projects a day there's no no limit for 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 size for timing so yeah to completely open are most collections like between 500 and a thousand or does it really vary mm, i it varies completely if you go to the explore page you can see like from one of one or three or ten thousand but usually i've seen mostly between 100 and 400 yeah jay still this it? is one i got today yeah. Is it generated when you when you mint it? Yeah, same, same. It has the hash of the the transaction. When you mint, it gets this transaction and it turns the the it makes the 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 NFT the artwork. But that's the rule so of the very, platform. You can't yeah. you can't just put something on there pre generated and sell it. Well, some people did some. There's a, another template that you can do pre profile picture so you just put the images in the background like a collage right and then you just open if you look in the explore page you might find some so but there's a there's another project another platform that you were talking about before is it's if block art from adrian in and that's pretty interesting because it's you have to take time so when you mint you can actually you the artist can leave some some controls for you to mint and then you are also part you you get royalties as a minter so i think there's only if you go up there in styles app there's one or two projects there are open now yeah gene kogan nadi brema tremble so you click on this and then you choose the art box you choose the block that you want to mint you You've got to rightly create block art. Yes. 
and then you're it's so what the pro one problem right um there's one thing with art blocks and fx hash you never know what you're going to mint right with this you have with art blocks with if block art you have time you choose your mint you can change the mods on the right and then once you get what you like you click mint your nft and then it it goes into the blockchain and you mint it and you get royalties also being a minter. Interesting. And, this has been around for the, a while, right? For, yeah. Yes, for a while, yes. And and if and somebody and you can sell it, of course. And somebody else, if right, you can edit some pieces. So this modification, these mods, once you so you can edit it afterwards. Yeah, once you buy it, you can change. I think the title also in the description and this modification. So you can change the block that you're that you are minting. So here, if you see here, you're you're minting on the block. 1208 something and you can change the blocks and you're painting a block on of ethereum so that's the it's a different approach than from fx hash and art blocks it's pretty interesting i haven't heard much from any... them lately though do you guys have any small small skulls on fx hash? i sold mine I have one. I minted one. I sold one. Yeah. I didn't realize it was going to blow up like it did. What, the, what was the appeal of them? I, I ended up buying some on secondary because someone was pumping them a long time ago and I thought they were kind of cool. But what was the appeal of them? Is like, weren't they one of the first ones? Uh, not that early, but early enough. Like pretty before when it was all beta and stuff like that, definitely. Mm -hmm. Let's see, November 11th. 2021 and the royalties are 10 percent. interesting oh this one is insane i sold this one of these for 300 bucks oh or, the rgb uh, yeah. yeah i meant to too i was on there i was on you the were... x hash rate at the very very beginning that's cool i don't know why i don't know why i sold them though like like i don't really need the tez i don't use it for anything <laughs> i know all tezos does is go down <laughs> <laughs> They're like 2200 now it was at um tezos was at what six dollars at the peak <laughs> i think yeah. it was at five or six that would have been 12 grand i have some of the signatures still let's talk about some other art blocks the stuff that's been getting a lot of attention the anti-cyclones and the memories of key lynn those seem to be i mean at least from you guys and you guys seem to know kind of the pulse of the art blocks community it seems like those are the two most uh you know, uh, hyped, I guess, projects in the last couple of months. Yeah, I, I'm not, it's hard to know why, like, like they're obviously very nice, but like compare there's like, oh, there's a lot of really nice things on art blocks. So it's just, it's, you never really know which ones are going to be the ones that but I do really like the memories. They really do kind of have a nice, like, I don't know if it's like a matted look to them. Like, but I find them, yeah, they're very, just very easy to, uh, to look at in the palette. It's really nice. The collection offer for OpenSea, and like we're looking at archipelago.art, but which is a really nice way to look at art blocks. <clears throat> I guess it must have a whole collection bid as well. I, I've noticed that now looking at OpenSea, with, when it has the whole collection bid where you can just bid on all, you know, for example, you could bid on all of the anti cyclones. You say, I'll take any of them for 6 ETH or whatever. It, it's interesting how it shows you that it, it treats it almost like an ERC 1155, right? So even though it's not, it's a, it's the unique ERC 721. It looks like, you know, think it kind of creates a market that looks a little more efficient, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's definitely a good, a good thing. I didn't realize how much of an effect that would have, but it really gives you better price discovery because if you're seeing, like an example was I was looking at the gallery of digital art pass and the floor was like 7.9 and the best offer was like 7.3. And it's like, okay, well, I mean, even if you paid 7.9, like there's not much difference there. Whereas other ones, you know, you might see an offer way lower and it's like, okay, well, that's obviously a fake, you know, you know, there's not much price discovery there. So I think some of these ev evaluation tools will probably start, you know, putting that into their, algorithm or whatever the way they use the thing they use to like 
you know, tell you your floor value of your NFTs and but that's way more accurate, right? Because it's actually something you could accept right then and there and get the money. Yeah, it's the true floor, I think, because if there's a if there's a collection wet offer, that's the floor. Right, yeah, like, basically, right? Like sell now price is that. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, when I first look at some of these um Fidenza like projects, I mean I feel like these are all like Fidenza like projects. They're shapes and they're rectangular canvases with shapes that are generated in different patterns, right? And they don't they don't all look yeah. the same. They, they look very different, but uh, like at what point are there too many of these things? Yeah, it's like when you compare seeing anticyclone to memories, the bottom memories I think are much stronger. I think anticyclone has Agreed. some really top pieces. Agree. And so like the, the high so the highest ones are really, really nice, but as a full collection, I think it kind of I don't know, it just like becomes a little bit too like the bottom good bottom percent, a good percentage of the bottom is very interchangeable. I think edifice is the same way. Yeah, like edifice the same way, exactly. And that one palette that, that I don't think people like. Click on that edifice um pep, because that's not the floor one, is it? Because that's a good one. No. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that brown palette. palette is always the ugliest one. And then if you go down like that colorful palette. I mean, that one at four is actually not bad, but it has that kind of weird white space there. But um, yeah, my favorite are the red and blue ones. Man, that one I I showed you guys that. So there was an edifice. Um, uh, click on highest last sale. Yeah, because it, it's probably I think it was the highest sale of an edifice in ETH terms. Uh, go down, it's that one right there with a the big circle, uh, the fifth one. Oh, that's a really yeah, nice that one. one. That's so beautiful, and. Yeah. I was looking at that and my, my wife saw it and said, Oh, like, that's awesome. I, I want to, like, I want to get that for her house. So I'm like, yeah, that is awesome. And it was on sale for 18 ETH, which then was, you know, similar to now it's like 18 grand. And I was kind of like, well, nothing, this is right before the kind of art blocks pump. I'm like, well, nothing selling. Like I'm sure I can make an offer. So I contacted the owner and I was like, look, I'm not, I'm on vacation, but when I get back, I'll give you an offer. But it's not going to be 18, but it'll be, you know, maybe a little lower than that. And he was like, all right, whatever. And then the next freaking day it sold. And I couldn't believe it. Cause I think it was the highest sale ever in ETH terms for an edifice or definitely one of the top five sales, which in this market to me, was crazy. Uh, 20 it sold for 20 ETH. Just a lot, you know, uh, it's beautiful though. It's a definitely a higher end. Like That's I think it's good. one of the best it's I've seen. Good. Oh, it's pixel rich. That's got a good collection. Yeah. So I wonder if you went to him and said, Hey, I have an offer or I have a guy who's interested or if it just was random. But, um, the thing is about those is like, I, I wanted to just to have, and sure I would sell it if someone offered me some crazy amount of money for it, but it is hard to sell the higher, you know, the, the more rare or the higher kind of appeal items that sell for a lot more initially, it's always hard to harder to flip those. Right. Um, it's way, it's always easier to flip floor stuff. Yeah, so and you're not you're you're usually going to get anything mid. You're usually going to get floor price for it. Exactly. So, like the the top stuff, you'll get proper offers because you'll have people like the six five to nine guys and curated and DVD. They'll go after the top stuff, but anything mid, I think I don't know. You have to be kind of lucky because then people have to find it too, right? You browse through like fifty things, like not going to happen. Okay, so I just had a thought. I feel like the longer a collection has been around, the more um, kind of granular you can get on all the different rarities and traits and stuff. And there's actually a lot more um, prices in between the low and the high. For example, punks have been around the longest. They've been around five years. And like my, my punk is a good example, you know, wild white 3D. It's a mid you know, mid to high tier punk, but it's not a zombie. It's not anything super crazy, but I feel like now I could get a lot more for it than well, last year doesn't count. Cause that was like a crazy bubble, but like, you know, two years ago, it's like, okay, it's, you know what I mean? Like, and, and if you look at Fidenza's or if you look at an edifice, like I kind of feel like after they've been around for two or three or four more years, I think more people are going to appreciate those mid to high tier ones. And there's going to be more, kind of difference between the prices as opposed to like right now it's like 
it's either a floor or it's a super rare one or good luck getting yeah. anything in between that. I don't know. I also feel think. like over, well, over time, I also think like less are listed. And so it's easier to like have a sense of what's out there. Right. So right. then, cause like with punks now, like people know, realize like people track what, Oh, this hasn't been listed in a while. It's a nice, nice punk that just got listed. People have a sense of kind of where things kind of belong and where partly because I don't like, it's not everything getting listed. Whereas for some collections, right. When you have a third of a 10,000 collection, you have 3000 listed things. Like it's just, there's an, you can't really go through all those things. Just, you won't have the time. Yeah, it's funny actually with with punks a long time ago when they were not worth anything when they're worth like a hundred bucks or whatever um the, the floor ones it actually was way there's way less liquidity and i think a lot of it was people just didn't care to bother to mm-hmm. log into their wallet and find them and sell them <laughs> and like we we would just drool like like one to two hundred of us that were in there looking at them all the time would just drool over like i remember a pigtail would never like no pigtail went on sale for like two years like ever and there was one wallet that had like 20 of them and there's only like 50 of them or something and so that was like the grail it's like if you could get a pigtail oh my god and i think even snowfro who tried to get every single one who ended up getting a set of every single trait um that fucker and he got a he ended up getting a, a alien you know partial owner of an alien so he has every single his alien ape zombie he had lots of zombies uh and then every trait of the regular punks and I think the one of the last ones he could get, I believe, was a pigtail because they're so hard to get. Or maybe he had gotten it, but like that was like his grail because he's like, it was so hard to get. I had to contact the owner and do all this and that. And then now, like every, I feel like every week I see one sell. And I'm like, what the hell? This is crazy. Yeah, well, people learn that they're worth, worth money. <laughs> yeah, we're worth more. Yeah. Art blocks also last year. I remember all the, the grails were the black and whites, right? It doesn't matter, mm-hmm. like next art blocks, the curated ones, the first pumps, like everything that was black and white, monochromatic ones were just higher priced. Yeah, the Fidenza, okay. the Fidenza black one that... Um, oh, Alex which, then, which one? Alex bought that. It's bought for like 650 ETH at the top. Remember, Alex Waste bought that black and white Fidenza. Yeah. There's that one there. Yeah, 650. Yeah, look at what this is. It's funny though. It's kind of ugly. I mean, I don't know. It's really rare, but I wouldn't want that on my wall. I'd much rather have a colorful one. Yeah, me too. <laughs> the meridians that are black and white are cool. Yeah, what's the new of the palette? Oh, yeah, those ones are like. Yeah, those almost like Misty 200. Mountains. Yeah. So cool. How many of the click on that? Uh, have, how many are there of those? Maybe that trait. Yeah, a monochrome. So that's not black and white. That's just monochrome. And then you got to go through charcoal. Is that what it is? Charcoal. This is that archipelago again. I haven't used this much. It's pretty cool. So Van, he's not on. He, he's not on the pod tonight, but he bought his third uh, memory of Key Lynn. He's going. <laughs> he's going apeshit on those things. I love those. I should have bought a second. I bought one when they're like. I bought one for like one point two ETH or something like that. Nice. Kind of wish, and they went down, and I'm like, oh, I should get another one. They never did. But I do. I do like them. They're really nice. But I don't really like a lot of the newer collections. I feel like there's getting there's a lot of hype a lot of times lately, and everyone's kind of excited in in block talk and stuff like that. But I think there's a lot like I feel like if you've been here for a while, you kind of seen a lot of the same stuff. So it's hard to get really excited about about new things. So definitely with memories, it's like completely different than than um, than what's before. And I think that's like. Well, there's only 10 of them or eight of them, nine of them. But I think that's like part of the, for me with our blocks, the collections that I really look for is something that's like very different than what has happened before. I do feel, feel like a lot of people are just reusing the same techniques and just like putting a different color palette or splitting up in different ways. 
but it really, in the end, it just feels like something that's already been done. Yeah. I mean, the problem I have is, is after 10 more years or 15 or 20 more years of art blocks, there's going to be so many, you know, and then maybe we totally reevaluate what we think is the best. It's hard to know. Yeah. I still like the older stuff though. I don't know why, what it, there was a simplicity to it. I think, I think now that there's, I think people are trying to, it's got a very, like, if you look at like the, like, uh, like, like the, the horror is really nice, but it's like just this kind of splatter of color. And there's a lot of projects like that, which is like visually overstimulating. What is that? A lot of Autom- like, automatism. What is that one? I haven't seen that before. It's yeah, it's like Keith, Keith Herring. Yeah. You know, yes, it has been around for a while. Did a lot of um, um, stuff on on uh, Tezos. The, um, I really like the operas. I just think they're really cool and different as well. Puka's really fun. Yeah, those are kind of cool. Really good artist. Just like, this is so strange. So let's talk about Damien Hurst, uh, the currency, the the deadline's coming up July 27, I think it is. I still have to do mine, but that's yeah, what you can do. <laughs> so for those who don't know, Damien Hurst, uh, he did 10,000. He made 10,000 of these dot paintings and they're pretty small. They're like, um, they're like the size of a MacBook, I think. And he had a team of people. He didn't do them all himself or he may not have done any of them, but he had them all dot these dots of color on these canvases and then he signed them all came up with names i don't know how he came up with the name some kind of algorithm i guess and um then he it's funny that he did that because he made them way before nfts existed but then somehow he held on to them and then came out a year ago with this project where he sold them all for it was two thousand dollars i think it was one eth at the time and you could he actually, I forgot about this. Someone had mentioned this the other day. He handpicked the wallets in a sense, like you had to apply. And then based on what was in your wallet, he would give it to you. And I think basically if you had a punk or if you had a um, autoglyph or if you had maybe a board ape, I don't know if board apes were really that big back then, or if you had whatever, like certain things. There's that some liked. art blocks. Art blocks. Yeah. Oh, Fidenza maybe. And so um, anyway, uh, so we all got in, I think from that, right? Like I think all of us got right. one. And then um, at the time it was, you know, it was really interesting. It's called the currency, right? He's just playing with the whole idea of money and how you value stuff. And he said, I'll, I'll do it for a year and at, at a year, but within a year, you have to decide if you're going to burn it or keep it. And if you burn the NFT, I'll send you the physical. If you keep the NFT after the burn date, then I burn the physical, physically burn it. And so that's coming up and I don't know what the latest numbers are, but I think more and more people are deciding to keep the physical, which is interesting because if you had asked me six months ago, I would have thought everyone was going to keep the NFT mostly. And so I'm going to, I'm going to get the physical just because I want to be able to have a Damien Hurst physical and I think it would look cool in my house. And I also yeah. feel like after the burn, I could be wrong, but I feel like the NFT price will go down. People are buying them now to burn them. And so then I think if you wait, you can get, if you want to have a pair, you can wait and then get one later, I think for cheaper, most likely. I mean, who knows really, but that's my guess. And I'll probably buy one if that happens, even if it doesn't happen, maybe I'll buy one later. I think it would be really cool once these frames get developed better to have the physical and then right next to it, have a a digital frame with your other one and like have them compared. Like that would, that'd be cool. Right. Like the, the kind of what it says about everything. I could definitely see a museum doing that. Right. Oh, having both. That yeah. Could, yeah. yeah. Kind of cool. Having the physical and then next to it, having the NFT on like a really cool frame. I mean, that just, that would say quite a bit, right? Like that, you don't even need to describe it more. Um, our, our friend, no one, uh, he's been on the pod before, um, Fonro, he's one, he has two and he wants to buy a third. For some reason, he has this idea of a triptych, like in his house, he wants, he wants three of them, which I, I agree that would look cool. And so, um, I think he's going to buy a third one to, to, to burn for I think the he got it today. Did he? Nice. He got it today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And two or uh, two thousand were already burned into the physical. Yeah. The only thing is that they're on Palm. They're not on ETH. And so I didn't really understand what Palm is. It's some. Um, I guess it's a layer two, but um, obviously it must be a layer two. But it is, you know, like like what is its long term 
outlook. I'm not sure. And we were talking about that today. Like if you wrap it and put it on emblem vault on ETH, but then if all of a sudden, let's say in the future of Palm, something happens to it, it's not secure, it goes under, then even if you have it wrapped, it doesn't mean anything because that initial token is worthless. So there's a slight risk of that, I guess, if it's not, you know, it's not an ETH token. Yeah, I'm, I'm 100% going to get the physical. It's just like, I don't have too much physical art. And he signs each... That. He signs each piece and on the back, um, they show you the exactly. signature, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And they also sell a frame for, I think, 150 quid, um, which these days is probably worth almost a dollar. What's a, what's a pound? <laughs> <laughs> a good time to buy. Anyway, 150 bucks or so, maybe a little more for um, a frame that's custom made for the currency. And so it's made because it has a, I believe the back of it is transparent. So you can see the back, which has, you know, his signature as well as like a seal, some other stuff on the back. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. It doesn't have the signature and the name of the. Yeah. The yeah, that's right. has, yeah. He writes yeah. the name and I think he handwrites it. I believe it looks like it's his handwriting yeah. and then he signs it, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I wish I bought two, honestly, but. I know. I tried to buy two. I tried to mint two and then I didn't have, I got approval for two different wallets, but I didn't have my ledger with me. So I couldn't get the second one, which is kind of annoying. Yeah. So let's talk about, um, I had this written down for last week, but let's talk about Ryan Carson, the, uh, <laughs> the Moonbirds, uh, former brief CCO or whatever his title was. Um, the COO. Yeah. COO. He, um, what the hell did he do? He he sold he bought like 30 moonbirds or something. Well, he sold his Hard. personal moonbirds and then basically bought them back with the fund, not the same ones, but like basically bought back a certain amount with his fund. And then someone tweeted, like, this is genius. Like he took a tax loss and then reinvested with his fund. I'm like, well, oh, oh my god. <laughs> that's not exactly like a high IQ play. Like it's kind of obvious, but like, yeah, sure. Oh, because um, he, he's up on ETH. That was the thing. That's like yeah. the, the, the weird, like, but it's still, it doesn't make any sense. It's like a loss is still a loss. It just doesn't seem like a, it just, the whole thing didn't make any sense very low. A lot it's of just the, weird. I think people with, yeah, people with the tax loss thing, like over, like they overplay the value there. It's like, yeah, in the last case, last ditch scenario at the end of the year, if you really need, to lower your tax bill and you know sell stuff you don't think is going to go up but it's still better for you to if the thing's going to go up to to not take a loss so the nesting thing is interesting because i thought about i have two moon birds yuri do you have one or two one only one you have one your pfp yeah. and i have two and i was thinking about selling one it'd be about at at cost for me so i wouldn't it'd be like tax neutral but I kind of just thought I might do it because I feel like I'm pretty confident that the whole market's going to go down pretty soon. And then I could just buy back later, but the whole nesting thing is what kind of gets you right. So my question was, can't you, can I still arrange an OTC trade and then the nesting stays, right? Like you could still transfer it and, and the nesting stays, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. You can transfer it within wallets for sure. Yeah. yeah. So that's something that would benefit like someone like me as opposed to someone maybe who just bought one, well, you know, who didn't know doesn't who's new to the space, right? Like I, I would be able to tell like who's legit and who's not and safely do that if I found the right buyer. And I could even arrange um like a swap if we like let's say the price did go down and we wanted a tax harvest, but then that gets a little tricky because then you got to report it and stuff. And I don't I don't know how you value stuff when you when you trade it, but Anyway, my point is like you can find like I could find someone I actually know and verify and be safe and make sure it's okay and then uh, sell them the nested moonbird at, at a slight premium over the floor, right? Because it would obviously be worth more than a floor one that isn't nested, right? Yeah. But I wonder what the premium is. I wonder if if people do pay much more for that or if that's even happening. There's no way to really know, right? There's nothing that tracks it. Definitely nothing that tracks it, but I bet there's. I'm sure within if you start asking people who are bigger in the there's gotta be someone that's the market making this. 
Yeah, like a bona fide um, from uh, yeah. for Fidenzas. So there's gonna be somebody <laughs> for Moonbirds is doing that, and that would actually be a very um, logical secondary like black market where you know if someone establishes a name and a trust and then they take you know five percent or two percent or whatever and they just arrange it for you. I mean that that kind of makes sense almost. I guess there's like rep- reputational issues. That's the only thing. I don't know. I don't know the community that well, so. Yeah. And they and there's this raven, right? That's marketplace that's supposed to happen in August or something. They defied for this raven. I forgot uh, about that. Trademark. Yeah. Oh right, yeah. yeah. That's so something like but didn't he buy we're talking about Ryan, like didn't he buy just before that? Was that yes. the complaint? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh yeah, and then they said, How could you not know about this? And he claims he doesn't know anything and blah blah blah. And whatever. And there's the high rise. Which is the mm-hmm. the next project? I think they will announce more in August. August. So I heard August. I heard someone say that the high rise part of what they're doing. I mean, they call it a metaverse, but it's not an open metaverse or never ending metaverse. It's it's a closed metaverse to some degree. Is what um, K Ro- K Rose has described it as. But I heard someone else suggest that it's going to be a Discord, you know, a competitor, and like a messaging. Some kind of messaging thing. I don't know. Have you guys heard that? No, I don't know. It's an odd thing to, to like tie to an NFT. I guess. I agree. That I don't. Like I don't know how that would work exactly, unless it's just a feature of the metaverse that you're in. So that maybe, I don't know. Uh, but but let's say they did have a product that was way better than Discord, way more secure. And you had to have a Moonbird or an Oddity or some other NFT in the system to to access it, but then you could use it for all kinds of stuff. Um, that would be kind of interesting. You guys remember, like, uh, was it Pigeon or something? Ages ago. Why? I'm just curious why there's not more. Why people haven't tried to develop more like cross. Um, Kind of cross app messaging systems. I don't know. Is it like it's just impossible to get Twitter API, impossible to get Discord API? It just feels like I hate jumping from all the different messaging systems. I hate it when I'm on Twitter and I want to really, I really want to use a Pepe emoji from Discord and I can't. I hate yeah. it when <laughs> it <happens>. <laughs> <laughs> like basically, if Twitter somehow got the Pepe emojis, then I don't even need Discord anymore. Yeah, I, just, I don't. Yeah, I like Twitter way better than Discord, but it, it's not, there are places on Discord that I want to still. But I hate going back and forth. It kind of sucks. Yeah, I uh, mean, Discord's better for reference and searchability and all that, but yeah. it's just it's painful. It's so insecure, and uh, so it's a, it's like a joke. I mean, it's a messaging app, and its biggest flaw is that it, all the messaging is completely insecure and like all it is is scams. And it's like, <laughs> if, if you can't, you have to turn off, it's a messaging app where you have to turn off your DM function because it's so unsafe. It's like, that doesn't, that doesn't really make sense. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. I, I saw something today that Nansen is doing a, what do they call it? Nansen chat or something where they just started it for people who have an account. Do you have an account, Pep? I think you do. But uh, Pep's asleep over here. He's sound, he's sound <laughs> It's like four in the morning. <laughs> like four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think uh, that might be cool. I mean, if you had to, if you had to pay for the Nansen account, that's the only that's going to severely limit their their market, right? But you know, I, I, obviously, in the next year or two, someone's going to come and, and improve on Discord. I mean, Discord is is not good. It's not a good product. Yeah, my my sense with the Nansen things, it's trying to be like a Bloomberg. Right. And so, yeah, they're just like copying Bloomberg messaging. So it's, it's really just about so people can get a hold of specific wallets or specific um, mm-hmm. you know, market players. And so you can talk to kind of the other professional traders. So yeah, I mean, that would, kind of, that would be kind of cool. Like I could, I could, let's say I didn't know you, Zinc, and you message me through there and you're like, hey, I'm interested in your punk or whatever. Then I could pull yeah. you up and they could show me all like all this data on you, you know. And so it'd be pretty clear like if you're legit or not. And then uh, you know, if I saw that you fleeced like eight different people out of their punks, <laughs> I'd be like, ah, I don't know about that, you know. 
But uh, Ethers can yeah, have like this a, messaging app also. Was, Ethers can. Yeah. Did you hear yeah, about? Um, oh yeah, the, I, yeah. Does anyone, do any of you guys use that? The Etherscan chatting? No. No. I think the problem is like if it's truly open, then you just get spam. Like it's weird. Like the Coinbase NFT has their like messaging service, whatever. And like if that ever got popular, you'd just be spammed with like it'd be no better than YouTube comments. Right. So I think you need for these things like an actual profile, an actual like be able to control this. It can't be just some messages on chain. It has to be like, you have to be able to have some filter. I was watching the office with my kids yesterday and it's like the, it's like the last season, which is really weird without Steve Carell and Andy's doing a YouTube video of him playing the banjo and someone in the office is anonymously like commenting about how much he sucks <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> He's getting all pissed off and he has no idea that it's like the lady next to him in the office. <laughs> that's so funny. So funny. Yeah. Like that's, you need to have it like where you have a public profile or something like that. It's just anonymity. It's just, I think people love to talk, love to have like, but as soon as you have actual anonymity, people just become bad actors. Yeah, it's I feel like, like not. I feel like there's two levels of anonymity, right? Like there's like us, which we're anonymous in the sense that we're not using our real names, but you kind of are the same person over time, yeah. and you have you have you know people kind of get to know you in that way. Versus like these completely like I hate it when you click on an NFT, you're looking at wanting to buy, and then you click on the owner, and it's like O X F B one two, and you're like, God damn it, you know, like come on, yeah. like I know That's it's probably. <laughs> what was it? Uh, 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 TA's alt account <laughs> that Van <Yeah>. <laughs> discovered. <laughs> and what was what was like the telltale sign? It was like the the I think it was a me bit. Emoji. I think it was the a wings. me bit of like <laughs> yeah. his me bit. With like, wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's the pig emoji constantly. That's funny. Mm-hmm. It's like a pig nose. Doesn't he have a double pig nose me bit? Oh, probably. The guy has everything. So why do you think Mebits are pumping so much? I don't know. You're going to be an avatar in the other side thing. Yeah, that's probably other other side related. What's up with the Saudis? uh, What's up with the Saudis for Oak thing? Do you guys get any wind of that? I just Uh, don't know. I don't even care. Who cares? The Saudi thing. It's just another. It's no different than Goblin Town or these other joke. Actually, there I feel like Goblin. There was a Goblin Town's story. better. I mean, the Saudis are just like yeah. punks with with. Um, there Saudi already clothes. was a Saudi. There was already a Saudi punk. Like, in, like, it's been around for over a year. Like, really? I don't know what they. Yeah, it's like H A B I I Z or something again. Like, I don't even know what that means, but it's just like uh, it's been around forever. And there was like a joke. I don't know. I didn't really understand it then. But it's just like it's just odd that like it's not even original memes. We're starting to get into derivatives of derivatives. Like that's kind of pathetic. Yeah, someone makes a like a a joke on Twitter, and then someone makes a 10k PFP collection immediately afterwards. <laughs> You're like, okay, and then you get someone like who's like has a big following buying into it, and then pumps it for a bit. Like he was selling them for like one, two ETH, right? And they're back down to like 0.5. Yeah, I think it's crazy. I mean, he, I don't, I don't understand how all that works, but like, like, like he doesn't even um, tell what he gets paid for doing these spaces, right? He doesn't disclose that. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. Oh my God, I'm sorry. So dumb. I mean, come on. Those are terrible. Do they have a zombie? Do they have a zombie Saudi? Not for sure they must. They're still 0.73 ETH for some reason. Oh, King. There we go. Wow. 13 ETH. Would not buy that. <laughs> it's like no different than like, I don't know. You remember Picasso punks? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I really went to like 50 ETH or something. <laughs> yeah, I cannot believe that. That was like the first like of one of those things to do that. Yeah. 
The uh, all right. The, the other thing I want to talk about was I don't know if you guys know anything about it, but uh, there's been some talk in our chat about the fake rares, and I know um, rare Skrilla. I, th- I don't know if he started the whole thing. I feel like he did. And then um, Matt Kane did one with the like in tribute of the Nakamoto and sold them for, or is going to sell them or is selling them for one Bitcoin, which, which is quite a lot. But I think VVD like curated eight of them or something. And that was one of them, but I, I don't, I don't know enough about them to really understand. Oh, that's my, go to that one. See that see series five. That's a, I have that baseball card that Jackie Robinson. It's a 1954 tops, Jackie Robinson, which I just bought not that long ago. It's kind of <laughs> awesome. I like that. Sick. Jackie Pepe. Hilarious. Um, they're cool. I like how they look, but I don't understand. I just don't understand them. Like, I don't understand, like, if there's any limit on how many people can make and then where do you buy them? And do you have to use the dispenser? Are they wrapped on emblem vault? Both? Are they only on, on counterparty? Like, I, I don't know how it works. Yeah. I have no idea. It looks like I they're similar to it. Pepe's. Yeah. It's, I saw it on the other website that Pepe, what, dot, what the fuck? Yeah. You can buy it from there. So you had to, I think you had to send your telegram username, put the pricing. Yeah. I go to the mm-hmm. drops. So yeah. They lost me a telegram. Buy. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> telegram just reminds me of ICO scams. I'm like, I don't use telegram, but you can say you could send ETH or Bitcoin at least. So it uh-huh, take a uh-huh. while, but, 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 but you don't get it in, in Ethereum, right? So you would get, you have to send your, Bitcoin account. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. Like, I, it's not that I don't like them. I think the art is cool and fun, but I don't really understand the collectability aspect of them. I don't. I don't see them catching on enough. Two life, two life, Pepe. That's awesome. I go down. <laughs> two life, two life, Pepe. All right, click on that. I bet you that one's expensive because it's like the first, one of the first ones. Oh, that's rare Skrilla. Yeah, no wonder. He's great. So wait, is it even for sale? I don't know. This is what I don't understand. Like you click on it and you go to this thing and leave. Wait, how do you buy it? It's too difficult. Go to the even for no that happy what the fuck website it's it's better. It's easier to oh okay. To navigate. 0.03 Bitcoin they sold for. That's pretty hilarious. All right. Well, maybe I need to like dive into these a little more. I just feel like it would take some time <laughs> to sort out. Yeah. I always got confused with the Pepe stuff. Yeah. We need Deb on to explain it a little better. And uh, I think um, no one, no one in Van, I think, have a couple too. I have one Pepe. Yeah. Yeah. I have a few. I, I, bought, actually, I, I bought a couple. I don't actually know how to look at it or. I guess I have a wallet somewhere. I can't remember how I got the counterparty party uh, to buy them. Or do you, but you just buy them with Bitcoin, but I don't know. Freaking taxes kill me. Cause I, I don't sell any of my Bitcoin. So like, I don't want to sell it now to buy a card and pay taxes on yeah. it. Annoying. But I feel like it's definitely a more of an artist vibe and the artists love it, which is cool. Oh, uh, like the JPEG oh, totally. summer it's, ones. It, it's still one of the few places that's uh, kind of actually like punk and counterculture. Right. It's, right. Just, it's just so much different than the typical... Like, if you look at, like, what the PFP culture is, it's so much different than... Um, like, you just... It, I just don't... They don't mesh at all. Yeah, they're, they're actually really cool the more you pan down and look at them. But the thing is, like, I feel like they're not... Even like some of them are like a hundred bucks, 200 bucks. But like, if you go in there like, oh, I want to buy five or 10 of these that are cool. Then you, you could still spend like two, three, 4,000 bucks. It's not like they're that cheap. So, you know, that, that's oh, yeah. why it's I guess definitely really, a consumption, I think. Yeah. It's hard right now to be like too many things are actual investment. I feel like pricing is starting to catch up to what like fair market is. Okay. Do you guys think that? In the next couple of months, the market's going to go down uh, for for ETH or up. Yeah, I'm not super confident. I don't know. 
things have started to look a little better, like just in like the macro. But I don't know. It's it's really hard. Like it's just hard to see right now with the and Bitcoin or like the where the where that kind of push is gonna come from. Yeah, I mean you don't always see it, right? But I, I'm not super news. confident. Yeah, I'm not super yeah. confident. I mean, I feel like um I guess I feel like if you're playing the long game, like fine, don't worry about it. But if you if you're wondering like should you buy in now versus buy in in two to three months? Honestly, my my advice would be two to three months, just a guess, but it just seems like I don't think we're that close yeah. to the bottom yet. Doesn't seem like it. As much as I wish we were. Oh. Yeah, I don't mind putting my ETH and the NFTs that I think are going to be, you know, valuable in the future. Like, I feel like as like, there's still that sense that like art does well in a recession. Right. So I think there's a lot of people that still look at say, you know, art blocks where there's museum quality stuff for pretty cheap or super rare stuff that seems still pretty cheap relative to you know, if you think this is an important movement, then getting in now would be the time to get in and you'll be able to flip for ETH later. And the thing about NFTs is that, you know, for example, that edifice I was showing you guys with the big blue circle that sold for 20 ETH, like he listed it for what, a 200 ETH or something. So like, I'm, I'm never going to own that, you know, like zero chance of ever owning that. So once you lose something that you wanted, it's like, ah. Oh. You know, even if it was going to oh, yeah. go down, maybe a little, I should have bought it, you know? So there's always that part of it too. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so I, I agree. Like, I still think like, I think what we're going to see is ETH, ETH can probably still, like the coin's probably still going to get, like they're just still going to bleed out. And during that time, we're still going to start seeing people reprice the good NFTs to kind of at least maintain USD. Like if you were to look at a chart of like squiggles USD, then uh, then you would you know it's pretty flat, right? Just kind of holding on to like kind of ten fifteen thousand um, dollar band, and so you know I think I don't know during this period. Like obviously at some point you're, you're gonna have to switch and you have to sell things to collect some like you know, stacks of meat, but I don't think it's the right moment right now. I feel I feel like art still is the best kind of. Ooh, I like algorithms. Stuff. Pep showing algorithms. I sold one for like thirty grand. That, oh, was, really? a, that was a nice sale. Yeah, they were they were, the were kind of cool. Another yeah, project cool. was weird. It's it stuck around point two forever, and then it just blew up. That's right. I bought mine for point two, and it had, that was like the floor yeah. for a really long time, and then. Yeah. Um, and then it totally blew up when art blocks were like exploding. And then I kind of sold it on the way down a little bit. Yeah. And then, uh, there was a few collections that were like that. The, um, the Unigrids. The Unigrids, but Unigrids is still doing okay. But like, yeah, they're, they're doing well. Okay. Yeah. They, they held they up pretty well. But the, um, the, um, blocks, blocks of art, you know what it is? Shem, Shem, Shem. I oh yeah, Sh- Shem Builder. Kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those blew up because he had the. Key. I remember we had the. Remember we had the. Um, it's some Tezo stuff. Yeah, but he had the club. He had to have yeah, like a bunch of different pieces. Every had to have all oh. seven of because uh, they'd have different uh, letters on them. Anyways, that blew up, but then I think that came quite crashing down. So, do you pay for Dune Pep, or is that free? This is pretty cool. I might have to get this. It's free. I mean, yeah, you, the, the the payment gets you be able to download the CSV, so you can actually get the data, and then also like uh, kind of unlimited, um, like no limits on on your runs of the programs. But if you're just looking mm-hmm. at other people's stuff, then it's no ego. Oh right, so you look at other people's stuff that they've created. So other people make dashboards, and then you can look at them. But if you want to run your own stuff, then if you don't have the free, if you have the free account, you have to like send the queue and there's only a limited amount of com- computational space for you. So there's actually, if you have an, I think if you have an account, you have uh, unlimited, right? There's like a, uh, a I think uh, ETH 
Berlin in September. There's a June event as well, like a two, uh, maybe just a single day. Um, I've actually applied to try and attend it, but I think they mostly want people who like use the platform a lot. Whereas I'm someone who thought, oh, cool. I'm, I'm someone who thought, oh, maybe I'll try the platform a bit more. But because um, like part of my work background, I kind of, I'm, I'm in no way a like database wizard, but I know a bit of SQL. So I think with a bit of work and a bit of effort, I could probably build some cool shit on there. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's super complicated because no. everything they've done all the database setups. Yeah, yeah. Like if you guys, so really, all you're doing, all like, you're doing is calling the databases. Yeah, exactly. And like, from them. The queries are pretty. Like, I mean, it, maybe it looks complicated to some people, but they're they're pretty simple queries in code. Yeah. So, well, cool. I think we're gonna wrap up. Any uh, last thoughts from anybody? <laughs> no, it's gonna get back it's on it, so. Literally, me. Um, you, you did. We did. I didn't speak the whole episode. I spoke once, and I've sent everyone to sleep with my uh, <laughs> with my time. <laughs> I thought your mic was broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I was, <laughs> I was focusing so hard on just typing and moving the mouse. Um, well, thanks for waking up in the middle of the night. We appreciate it. No. Yuri, it's good to have you on. Appreciate it. Yeah, see yeah. you on again soon. Thank you. Yes. See you soon, guys. All right, guys. That was fun. Yeah. All right. Take care. Bye bye.